The New Coke Theory If they released New Coke today, would you try it? For a product to be so revered and abhorred at the same time, a new version that tastes even better may be the next big thing for Coke lovers. Wrong! Coke may have tasted completely different today if it wasn't for the massive marketing flop that was New Coke. Where did it go? Why did they release it? Was it all a marketing strategy to get over one on Big Daddy Pepsi Man? Or a cover-up for when they took the coca out of Coca-Cola? Let's find out with New Coke Theory. The Theory After the introduction and immediate dismissal of New Coke, some believed that Coca-Cola had released the new product with hopes that it would flop. The flop would cause Coke lovers to petition the original formula to return, which would then cause Coke sales to skyrocket. As they say, no press is bad press, right? Well, alternately, some people believe that new Coke was a cover-up for the change from natural sugars to the new high-fructose corn syrups that were switched around the same time. Even Time Magazine endorsed a theory saying that New Coke was a cover for the removal of the coca plant from Coke products? The History Imagine this. It's 1985. Back to the Future and Rambo are brand new. Countless new radio singles are breaking the charts, and everybody knows the refreshing taste of Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola's last new product, Diet Coke, had been a huge hit leading it to the spot of number one diet soft drink in the U.S., third top soft drink in the U.S., and the top drink brand among women. But it seemed like Coca-Cola was ready for a change. Come April, spring is blooming in the beautiful city of New York when Coca-Cola's own chairman and CEO, Roberto Gazzetta, stood tall in front of the Lincoln Center to introduce their amazing new formula, which he claimed to be smoother, rounder, yet bolder, a more harmonious flavor. For the first time in 99 years, Coca-Cola was going to implement a change in the original recipe of Coke, and they were hoping to finally beat Pepsi's biggest leading marketing strategy, the Pepsi Challenge. People of all ages from all over the globe had heard of this challenge. It was simple, and it was proving cup by cup that Pepsi was more preferred by the American audience. Over 50% of people chose Pepsi when submitted to the blind taste test between Coke and Pepsi. The CEO and chairman of Coca-Cola were devastated. So they dove fully into something that you know everyone loves. Change. They immediately started making changes to their formula and conducted 200,000 taste tests which brought results that no one expected. It was a hit. More than half of the subjects in the test said New Coke was better than both Pepsi and Old Coke. With everyone seemingly happy and content with the new product, they began their big release to market. The Reception America was irate. Coca-Cola is a family brand. Those condensation-covered glass bottles are held near and dear to the hearts of the American people, and this was a personal attack on their everyday life. It's like the 80s equivalent of Netflix changing their password-sharing policy. Coca-Cola was receiving 5,000 angry phone calls a day. By June, they reached 8,000 irate callers a day, and protest groups began rise. Shareholders were dropping stocks quicker than anyone had expected, and the company was in trouble. So the company did what it thought was best and let it go. The Marketing New Coke wasn't released with any new crazy marketing strategies. I couldn't find much in terms of media other than the millions of dollars worth of basic flyers, billboards, and their always friendly commercials. But their greatest marketing asset was their name. As soon as the word of New Coke was being released, newspapers and word of mouth created a disrupt in the daily lives for hundreds of thousands of people. The Conspiracy Now that we know most of the story, let's dive back into the theories we were focusing on today. Did Coca-Cola release a new Coke to cover the removal of cocaine from Coke? Coca-Cola claims that cocaine has never been an added ingredient into Coke but many sources say otherwise. 
Coca-Cola was first marketed as a patent medicine. It contained minuscule amounts of cocaine in the form of an extract in each bottle, and it was completely legal at the time. Most believe they won't own up to their past due to potential lawsuits or because they want to uphold the family brand at any cost. But whether it contained cocaine on release wasn't the question, though. Was the coca plant in bottles in the 80s? Research says no. Coca-Cola was released in 1886, and by 1929, Coca-Cola removed the drug completely. Coca-Cola was even reported to have immense sales losses during their early years because of the removal. In my opinion, I think the company shouldn't be ashamed of their past. In my mind, Coca-Cola is a more interesting product after knowing its previous history as an everyday medicine rather than a sugary distraction to our health. They took a complete formal switch from a medicine to the everyday family drink imagery we see today. As for the high fructose corn syrup, many believe that new Coke release could have been a cover for the crashing of the natural sugar cane market in Cuba. During the mid-1970s, HFCs were rising in popularity and gained traction from a large amount of companies. It was a win-win to switch. Not only was it cost-effective, but it wasn't being bought with blood money. In the 60s, the U.S. was receiving a large amount of their sugar cane from Cuba. After the U.S. placed embargoes on them, they turned to the USSR, bringing tensions. With tensions being held around whether we should be receiving sugar cane from outside countries, most companies felt that it was more wise to just switch. I believe that it was most likely inevitable that we were going to switch to high fructose corn syrups. Coca-Cola wasn't the first, and they won't be the last. For the next theory, which is seen as the most widely believed, did Coca-Cola release new Coke solely for the immense uprise in sales for their original product? The company sunk millions of dollars into research and development, giving hopes and a passion project to their workforce for their hopeful new product. The taste test studies were a huge success in the eyes of the team, and they had big dreams for their work. No one expected the hate they received, and the immediate dismissal seemed to be the safest option. In my personal opinion, I don't believe that Coke would have muddled their own self-image during such a hot tension climate that was Coke vs. Pepsi in the 80s. As a family brand, aiming for a failure couldn't have been approved by the board members. If you liked this video, make sure to comment and subscribe. Thanks for watching and theorizing with me. What's your theory?